Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor. We talk about movies on this show, typically older films, and in this one specifically, this is our this is a special episode for two reasons. One, it's the, the episode once a month where patrons vote for the movie we're going to talk about, and then it's special doubly so this time, because it's the first one that we're doing of that. This is the first time I've had a, a voting movie win, and this is the first time we're talking about it, so uh, so that's fun. So what won the vote? Uh, basically the way the voting works is that for the for, for the month, uh, the patrons can vote uh, for a bonus episode next month, so this was this was the vote from last month. Uh, this is a little bit later in the month than we'd, in, we'd anticipated doing this, but other things kept coming up to do, and things got pushed back, and whatnot. but we are here now. And the winner of the vote, of course, was The Bad Sleep Well, which is a film by Akira Kurosawa from 1960. Um... Which is interesting. It's interesting that this is the first Kurosawa movie we're doing on this. Because oh, I, th- I think had you asked me when we started this show, uh, Kurosawa, yeah, we'll probably do some Kurosawa. We'll, we'll do Seven Samurai. We'll do, we'll do uh, Yujimbo. We'll do you know all, all these usual suspects. Yeah. Whereas when you suggested this one for the vote, I actually didn't. I wasn't familiar with this one. This was one I did not know of. Uh, yeah. But obviously, I, I seen the name Kurosawa and went, oh, never mind. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, put exactly. it on yeah it's good enough. <laughs> yeah, put it on the list. It's fine. Yeah. And that's all you really need to know when it's, it's like, yeah, is this worth even considering? It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's good enough. Yeah. So so this one, and uh, what we talk about, it's a Kurosawa movie. It is not a samurai film, and you'd be mistaken for maybe assuming that it was, just given the fact that Kurosawa often did samurai movies. Not all of them, but a lot of his Cern- films are. Certainly what he's most remembered for. Yeah. So I guess we'll start spoiler-free. Uh, and we'll warn you before we go into spoilers. I don't know how long the, the spoiler-free section will be necessarily, but just to have a sense of how, if we liked it or not, that kind of thing, yada yada, uh, and then we'll get into it. So, um, so what is the bad sleep well about? It is he about he sort of, especially corruption in in a in a business, and a character's out for revenge over something that sort of explained as the film goes on, and. It's it's basically just money laundering and embezzlement kind of thing, but the head honchos at this this business are kind of forcing the lower down people who are involved to commit suicide so they don't get implicated, so that you know before they can be interrogated and investigated and all the rest of it, they're sort of they have this code of honor where they'll they'll commit suicide, um, and but there's someone out to prove what they're up to. There's someone out to get them. Uh, yeah. And that's that's kind of the plot. It's kind of a, a noir. It's uh, apparently somewhat based on Hamlet. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. A lot of the the, the themes overall uh, mm. are there, and it's a lot of the characters they're not exact, but they're very very close to the, the archetypes set up in that. I did read Hamlet when I was in school, but that was a long time ago now, um, and my memory's foggy enough on it. Yeah, that... it's kind of like the, the whole Danish court in Hamlet is basically the corporate businesses right okay this. okay so if, if that can give you some context to, to base it around yeah yeah i, I was because I, I before before i watched it, I, I did remember here you know, there's some some basis of hamlet in here and i was i i did and one of the few things i remember for hamlet is the opening line is uh, something is rotten in the state of denmark and i wondered if there was going to be a line like that uh, yeah. it's it's less of a, a direct adaptation than some of his other uh, Shakespeare works that, that yeah. Kurosawa did, but it's certainly strongly influenced by Hamlet. Yeah, it's definitely. I, I think more so. Than the, I mean, obviously, the other ones are samurai films, yeah. uh, sort of out of whatever the Shakespeare play was. Whereas here, it very much is its own thing. It feels like uh, it's a noir. It is. Uh, this is Japan's answer to to film noir. Yeah, um, and it's got a lot of his regulars. Uh, Toshiro Mifune uh, plays the main character, Nishi. Um, Takashi Shimura is in it as well. Uh, to as soon as I saw him, I went, "Oh, that's the guy from Mikuru. Uh I mean, I couldn't have said his name without looking it up, but uh, it's the guy from Mikuru. Uh It's an, obviously on one of his big films, and uh, no, so I, I, the answer's probably quite obvious. But did you like? Uh, did you enjoy the bad sleep well? Very, very much. Yeah, I liked it a lot as well. Um, it is two and a half hours, and I, if I have a complaint about the film, is that I do think the opening. See if it's even called a prologue by one of the characters. The opening uh, twenty-minute wedding party sequence uh, is probably the weakest point of the film. Yeah, I think I think it's fascinating how it shifts perspective after, though, like like the way it sets up things in that that prologue. Yeah, it's kind of a thematic. I think my problem with it is that it it, it introduces so many different like. Uh, 
character names, plot ideas, plot details. There's so much being talked about really quickly amongst because there's the, 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 the paparazzi are there and they're, they're kind of yeah. gossiping as things are going on in the wedding. And it was it was giving me so much information that it was kind of hard to take a lot of it in. Um, and it, it didn't really feel like a movie to me until it really set up what the plot was going to be. Uh, and, and that that came that bec- that became once we really understood what Nishi's character was, and we sort of understand oh this was the, this is what the movie's going to be about, kind yeah. of thing. Uh, There's definitely some fantastic moments in that opening section, though. Oh sure, sure, yeah, there is. I mean, it's it's not badly directed or anything like that. It's it's just I wasn't really sure what the movie was yet, uh, mm. and it felt like it was spending a long time in that scene where I'm like I I don't really what is this movie? I still don't know. Uh, yeah. And then it, it got to a point after that, not not long after it, admittedly, it's, it's pretty soon after mm. after that wedding stuff. But it is a good twenty minutes or so of uh, kind of it's kind of introduction by like, like, you're almost like the the paparazzi, you know, like mm. just at this party, gleaming little bits of information here, bits there, and that's kind of what it is. But you, and you're kind of getting a sense of who some of these characters are, but not necessarily what any purpose in the plot is going to be. Yeah, I just I wanted to get that out of the way first because it really is my only criticism. Yeah, as I I think that opening twenty twenty five minutes feels really slow because I didn't really get a grasp of what the movie was really going to be yet. Like, mm. uh, but once we actually set up who who Nishi's character is and what he's doing and what his plan is and how he's trying to accomplish it, that's when we started getting a excitement from what he's trying to achieve, but also just some simple things like suspense and yeah, there's, there's a lot of that throughout. There is. Uh, and kind of things, and just the complexity of the characters. Like, there's so many. There's like really good. Uh, like, I sort of almost took a war between good and bad. Obviously, we'll talk about the themes of the movie in a, in a little bit. But uh, that, that's when they started feeling like complex people rather than just oh, here's a list of characters. Which I, I thought the opening scene kind of felt a little bit like it was like. Yeah, yeah, like I say, you get little snippets, and you just get a sense of yeah. okay, that's that character, but they don't really have anything beyond that at first yeah yeah so there's the boss character he's this and you know they're talking about multiple companies they're talking about various like positions in the companies and it's it's a lot to take in and actually process what any of it means i do think for me it gets away with it a little bit just because like you said you don't get much information they are very much just a list of characters but because that is the start of the film it kind of excuses it a little bit well see I i think the problem for me with it though is that it 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 just dumps all this info on me and mm. the thing is, is the movie after that, by showing me what the characters do, each of them, I, I understand what they are and who they are and what they do. Um, but having people just say this really quickly at the start, it's almost yeah, overwhelming. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, 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 am I supposed to keep it, all this it, in? It is a lot of information. Like, all at once. Yeah. Um, the, the movie, to be fair, Kurosawa knows what he's doing. He he guides you through it after that. But it's almost it just it's almost scary for a minute. Where I'm like, wait a minute, am I supposed to remember all these all these details, what all these job yeah, titles are? Yeah, it's, and... it's one of those things where they set it all up, give you all the information, and then as you go through it slowly, you kind of remember. You go, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I think there's one key plot point that's set up, maybe two, yeah. but there's one key plot point and bit of the backstory that's set up in that opening scene, which they they need to set up and they need to have that there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the rest of it's like not quite redundant, but. It just they give maybe too much, too much, uh, and but that is my one criticism is that that opening twenty minutes feels slow because it is just all this information being spouted at me constantly. Yeah. Um, once we get past that though, and it becomes what what the movie actually is, uh, it is two hours of just pure joy. Uh, like I say, suspense, um, glorious yeah. cinematography. It's uh, one of the things that I love about a lot of Kurosawa's movies from this time period. Is that it's very rare to see a film that's an anamorphic, you know, the big wide, mm. you know, like what well, like most movies are today, uh, but in black and white because typically movies shifted to color before they shifted to going this wide. There are exceptions, obviously, but it's fairly uncommon. Yeah, it's to the point where it's clear it's a, a stylistic choice, yeah, Whereas rather with, than a limitation. Yeah, and with Kurosawa, I can think of at least three or four examples just off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, he likes. He, he likes the wide and the black and white, yeah. doesn't he? Uh, Yojimbo and Sanjuro are both uh, wide and black and white. Um, I think high and low might be, uh, just from memory, but like he's got quite a few of them. Mm. Um, but no, so... Uh, no, very, very stylish, very, very good. I, I think the characters are actually really complex uh, to yeah. a very interesting, a very, a very exciting degree because the... 
Nishi, obviously the title of the movie is The Bad Sleep Well, and I, I think I immediately read that as, oh, The Bad Sleep Well because they don't feel any guilt over the bad shit they do. That's what makes them bad. Yeah. Um, And the whole idea with the main character is, okay, he's, he's on this quest for vengeance, he's on this quest to see justice done, but does he cross a line himself? Does he become bad in doing so? There's, there's, there's a morality to it in the middle, which I really... Really it's, like. it's why I think it's really interesting that to go back to what you were just saying that it is in black and white because it almost feels mm. like nah this is a stark just shades of grey because that's all that's all a black and white movie is there is no clear colours it's just here's shades of grey and that's kind of ties in really nicely with the the themes that it presents yeah maybe maybe that was a choice uh, or maybe it, it wasn't been. maybe maybe yeah. colour was just hard to hard to do in Japan in 1960 yeah, yeah. I, I don't know but uh, it's, it's good stuff um acting's really good across the board um yeah. it's very stylish the way it's shot as we said there's some great moments where it plays with uh, darkness mm. yeah there really is a lot, a lot of shadows yeah a lot of shadows uh and reflections as well some good use of reflections mm. yeah there is um and yeah it's a proper emotional roller coaster once it gets going which i i i again I almost wasn't expecting it. I don't know why I doubt Kurosawa. I don't. I think it's maybe because I hadn't heard of this one before. I was like, oh, is this one of his lesser films? And that's why I've not heard of it before now. And then, like, once it got going, I was like, oh yeah, no, this is just. It's it's absolutely not one of his lesser it's films. It's not. It's, it's, it's a Kurosawa. If I, I like it more than some of the other ones that are supposed to be. <laughs> Me too. Heavy it's just, hitters. So. It's just less well known for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so no, uh, very, very good. Yeah, lots uh, of good stuff. Like what uh, you're saying about the the characters being so complex, hmm. it makes them really memorable. Like you, you have no problem remembering who it is. You know, sometimes after we finish a movie and we go right, who was who, because you get a lot of characters. You've had you know two and a half hours, and sometimes it, it kind of they're not clear enough to define themselves in your mind. Yeah. Whereas here you go, no, you know who exactly who each of them are. Well, yeah, but except you probably can't say most of their names because it's in Japanese and the names right. are hard to remember. But other than that, but, yes. But, but yeah, other than the actual, just the, the pronunciation of names, yeah. I know who all of them actually are as a character, as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're placed in the, in the plot, as it were. Uh, yeah. All of that, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a sort of summary before we started talking about proper spoilers, uh, which unfortunately was most of the complaint about the opening scene, but the rest of it's fantastic, so don't, don't yeah. let that put you off. I also want to say I really love the music. It's very different to what you'd expect from what is essentially you know, a, a noir corporate thriller. Hmm. The music's often very light-hearted, almost, uh, and frantic. There's, it, considering that it plays with a lot of suspense and shadows, the music's what? actually a lot busier yeah. than you'd think. When it does play, I would still I would still say the majority of the film doesn't have music. Yeah, yeah. C- certainly most of the big scenes I'm thinking of. No, are they silent. don't. But when it's yeah. there, it's it's not what you necessarily think it would be, and it's something that uh, so it's something because I did a little one scene in with a in a in a lecture once, and the composer had said the whole purpose behind it was uh, where when he thought of you know corporate business, there was a phrase that always stuck with him because uh, it's, it's like a jungle out there so he literally scored it as if it was a, ju- a literal jungle hmm. so i thought that was a, a really interesting approach to it oh, that's, that's pretty cool uh so yeah spoilers full spoilers yeah. from this point on for the bad sleep well i think uh, i want to talk about characters and, and stuff and plot points um so obviously the, the real setup of the movie is a. Uh, we see like one of the guys who just who is working for the company like jumps in front of a in front of a bus or a truck or whatever it is and kills himself and then the other guy who uh, uh, Wada he he's going to kill himself uh, by jumping into a volcano <laughs> which is a hell of a way to go but if you want to make a statement that's it isn't it that, that's how you do it um, but that's that's when Nishi kind of reveals that he's the because there's some there's some hints before then that there's someone working against them possibly from yeah. within like someone's because someone sends the cake at the start which is their office building but with a was that a rose i think was that a flower it was sticking yeah. out of the window out of a window where this this person committed suicide five years ago and this was someone like these new characters who are committing suicide was committing suicide so that they wouldn't talk they, they, yeah there was there was a great line as just before the the first guy does hmm. commit suicide jumping in front of the the, the vehicle where the other guy says you've got to see this through to its bitter end. Like you know what you know what you got to do. 
Yeah, he, he gets the message. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so there's, there's clear implications that there's someone working in it. I kind of guess it's probably because up until this point, uh, Mifune's character, Nishi, he's sitting there at the wedding, he's the groom, but he doesn't really say anything. He's just kind of there. <laughs> he is, yeah. It's like, nah, he's got a bigger part to play in this. He's, he's, the, he's the inside man. He so is. Uh, and of course he is and he, he stops him from killing himself and he, he sort of brings him into the fold K- kind of keeps him captive to an extent but not like it's kind of like yeah if you go anywhere else they're going to hunt you down and kill you so you yeah, might, you as, might well, as well stay with me yeah, yeah this, that kind of thing but so he, he starts his, his tirade we see him like plank money and uh, and the other guys like case uh, the Sh- 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 Shirai I think you pronounce it Shirai yeah yeah Shirai character he, he kind of messes up because Nishi's already like taking some money from like the safety deposit box, but then he planks it in his his bag so that he looks guilty, and then Shiri's kind of like they put a hit in him. In fact, one of my favorite moments, just from a, a visual standpoint, is when the hitman is in the mm. alleyway. And it's it's like all these big stretches of darkness, and then he, he, he uses his lighter. He flicks his lighter on, and you just see the light pop up, and you see his face, yeah. and then it goes away again. Yeah, it's it's fantastic, isn't it? Because yeah. it just gives you everything that you need. Just with one little light, and then then it's gone. It's, you've still got everything you needed, though. Yeah, and it is, of course this is when Nishi picks him up, and he event he takes him to the the office that his father. Because it turns out that's that's who it is. We find that out later on. His father's the one who committed suicide five years ago, and he takes him to that office, and he sort of that's when he he sort of spills the story and explains things. And this is where it was really getting into the themes of the movie for me, because this was like. All right, so he's he's on this quest for justice, possibly vengeance. He's because he, he is kind of making this particular guy commit. Because he, he reveals that this this guy in particular uh, was right. He was the one that was part of the with his father, like actually suggested he do yeah, this. He was, he, what, yeah, what are the enforcers? Yeah, um, but that, this for me was like okay, this is really setting up the themes of the movie. This is like okay, he's the good guy. He's our hero. But is he like crossing certain lines? And obviously, I think the other main part of where it comes out of that is obviously we mentioned that he was a, he was at a wedding at the start. The wedding, of course, was to the villain's daughter, uh, yes. to Yoshiko, and she she has a she walks with a crutch. She's got a, a an injury in her leg that's permanent, and uh, with her brother uh, Tetsuo is a character as well. And he's like, oh, you know, if you break my sister's heart, I'll break your neck, <laughs> kind of thing. And yeah, when you say that as your wedding speech, that was his yeah. wedding speech. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it cut to someone else. Goes well. That was unique. <laughs> it was yeah. unique. That doesn't I mean there's moments like that that made the opening worthwhile enough for me. Like that, and you know the reactions when the cake came out. Yeah, uh, it was worth mentioning. It's Shirai who reacts the most with the cake because he he he's holding the knife and he drops it and he's yeah. all frantic because he knows what that means. He, he it means something to him. Um, but yeah, so it's yeah the stuff of the wife. It's the wife in particular, actually, that really makes you question. Like, is he crossing a line? Because it, it's it's the it's the the wife is the thing that makes him think he's maybe crossing a line. It's mm. where he kind of feels guilty. It's you know it's, it's what causes him not to sleep at night, if you will. If we're going with the the metaphor of the the title of the movie, I, I think that whole bit about the the title of the movie is really interesting. Is you know you've you've singled out this key scene in the office, which that's also the scene where he essentially says that like oh how do they they sleep yeah. okay at night but he doesn't quite say it but you know he paraphrases yeah he's poking at it because yeah because he's married the wife to get in with the, the boss man and because he's working as his secretary so he's close by he's, he's hearing things he can plant things he's, he's he's around and it comes up that he's actually developed feelings for her but she genuinely wants to actually you know be a married woman and likes him and she's like upset that he's like insisting on sleeping in different beds. Now he's actually doing that for kind of noble reasons. Where he feels like he's taking advantage if he does like sleep with her and things like that. Yeah. So he he's kind of like counteracting it because he has his guilt. Um, but it it makes you care about the fact that he feels bad about doing this to her, and you feel bad when she finds this out. And th- their relationship, it's funny. There was a lot of things in this movie where when they started setting things up, I really didn't. Like, it was fine, but I didn't necessarily think early on, oh, I'm going to care about those two as a couple by the end of the movie. Well, that's it, because it, it, when, it, when it's set up, it's just like, okay, even at the wedding, people aren't really sure why they're getting married. They're like, oh, what, what, why is he deserve the boss's daughter? Like, it's, it's very unsure as to, you know, what's the <clears> point <throat> of this relationship from an outside perspective? And that's kind of how we feel at the start as well. Yeah, but over the course of the movie, 
uh, him having having the feelings, and obviously he buys the flowers, which is sort of him going to make his first actual show that he does care about her, uh, is when he's, he's found out. But and that's when he runs off, and it's it's actually really exciting. It's because they're in the hideout, uh, and they're sort of it's like a, a, a factory that's been bombed. Um, and I've got some comments on that actually. That's setting for their hideout. Uh, mm. But when it cuts to this, uh, it's a uh, Wada who runs off and goes to get her because he wants a different resolution to all this. He's he's not necessarily happy with how how Nishi and Itakura. I had to think about his name there. Itakura. Itakura. Yes. I'll go with that. Itakura. He, he's, he's the guy who swapped names with, because we find out that him and uh, yeah. Nishi have swapped names, and that, that's how he got in close, without them noticing names that are similar to his dad or what, anything like that. It completely makes them anonymous kind of thing. It, it also mentions later on, it gives them the history that makes it look, oh, he used to be a... He used to go to college, used to do all these things, where he hadn't actually done these things, but the actual Nishi had, so... Yeah, it gave him the background he needed to get the job, and it gave him, you know, plausible deniability, because for all intents and purposes, legally, all the records were changed, so he was this person, so no matter what they looked into, they'd they'd just find this. But yeah, so... so so why does not really happy with their plan for how they're handling this? Because at this point they've got the other guy, they've got um, Moromiya, or Morayima, uh, locked in a in a cell, sort of basically starving him until he talks about everything because he knows he's he's got all the dirt on the company. He's he can yeah. he can give them everything if he talks. Uh, but of course, as we've seen, they're quite loyal. They're willing to kill themselves to uh, avoid speaking to the authorities. But he's not happy enough, so he goes and gets uh, Yoshiko and. It's funny because you see this shot of the stairs, and I'm like, "Oh, it's going to be a crutch. We're going to see a crutch come down." Like I was sort of anticipating it. Like, and, oh. and at first you don't. Yeah, at first you just see it's just Wada who comes down. It's just him, his feet. Yeah, and it's it's it settles on that shot for quite a bit because you don't even see like his face when you just see the legs coming down. Yeah, it could be it could be the bad guy. It could be. Yeah, <laughs> it, could yeah, be it really just sits there and waits to find out who it is. But then she comes down, and we get this kind of touching scene where he. He opens up and actually explains because at this point, okay, we know it was his father, and we know that he was illegitimate, which is why no one knew immediately that he had a son. But he actually tells a story of how he resented his father and how they had a really bad relationship because he was treated as illegitimate. Uh, when he found out he's, you know, the guy who was pretending to be his uncle was actually his father, he distanced himself from that. Um, but he realized that when he tried to come and see him just before he committed suicide, he was trying to make amends. Uh, for everything, he was very apologetic, and he left them all of his dirty money because he was like, "Wait yeah. a minute, why is he giving me one point five billion yen? Like, yeah, he shouldn't it's, afford that." And... It, it's all about the, the the regret of the the relationship, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and that that's what drives him. And they have this touchy moment, and what I I really like about it is, it, I think there's a great parallel where whenever we see, um, Iba Iba Bucci, who's the the bad guy, her father, uh, whenever we see him with her. He's actually a really kind father. He's a really nice person to her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her brother Tetsio has, you know, maybe, maybe a, a bit of reservations about him. But he's still, you know, he still thinks he's a, a good father. Yeah. Uh, to, to, he Even he says to her he was a good father to her at, at all times. Yeah. And uh, like, and I think there's a nice parallel here where Nisha's, Nisha's dad wasn't that great a father to him. Yeah. But ultimately, he was maybe a good person at heart, even if he got wrapped up in all this stuff. Whereas, Ibabuchi is a horrible person who's just nice to his daughter. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's really interesting that he puts on a front to his daughter, but and and that's all it is. Well, I mean, he probably does care for his daughter, obviously, but it's it's not who he actually is. It's just who he wants her to see. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. with Nishi's father, he talks about how when he thought it was his uncle. He, he thinks back, and there was often things that he said that were, you know, showed his affection, but he just never realised. He never, he never noticed what he was actually saying until afterwards. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's fighting for justice. He's fighting for uh, all this corruption because obviously the movie's a lot about the corruption in businesses, which apparently was like a big thing in Japan after after the war. And I think that was a big thing as well when when we first see this hideout. Uh, at the, the the sort of the burned down factory, and they, they come out up top, and it's like a it's like a wasteland. Like this entire area has been bombed, yeah. um, and I thought that was very a very interesting set because they start reminiscing about being around here and doing things and talking about their childhood because they were friends growing up and all the rest of it. Uh, I I think it's very interesting this this setting here because it, it's very much like 
almost like the characters are fighting for justice because this is a world that still remembers the Second World War. You know, it's only yeah. 15 years since that ended. Like they, As they say, they were kids. They were pulled into the factory from school. Now, you're going to work on munitions because we need everyone to be working and you're already like 12 or whatever, so you're old enough to do it. Go do it. Yeah, it's it's like a just a reminder that the world is a mess. You know, like that everything, not everything is neat. Even if you, you know, they look at the cities and everything looks okay. When you look underneath, things are still just this desolate mess. And that's kind of well, what it is for the, for the corporate world as well. I, I would, well, I, would, I was looking at it from a different spin. I was looking at it more, no, no, no. The reason why this is almost more insulting that they're being this corrupt and greedy and only thinking of themselves is that it's not been that long since these horrific acts have happened, since mm. everyone went through all of this. And now there's these people so soon after that are just being greedy and taking things from themselves and not caring about anyone else. They're being so inhumane when all of this is still so fresh in the memories of everyone who lived through it. Yeah, and I think it's a point that it's 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 still very visible if you look for it. Yeah, this, this entire area looks like a bomb site. It, is, it does, and uh, I'm sure if you didn't go out and, you know, if you didn't go out your way to look at it, you, you wouldn't notice, you'd just see the city, and, you, you know, you wouldn't mm. really think about it necessarily in the same way as they choose to put themselves there, so they have to think about it, they can't forget. Yeah. Uh, and I like that, I, I like that just that, that that idea of the memory. Like, they're yeah. living in the memory because it hel- uh, it helps drive them. That's that's all of this film, really. Like, all, all of Nishi's uh, motivation is the memories of his father. Uh, it, it's, that's all it is. It's the memories of when he was a kid and, and he thought it was his uncle. How did he treat him and how that has affected him as an adult now? And it's, yeah. you know, the same here with the war. Like, the, how did those experiences affect who he is now? Yeah. And I, I think... He, Obviously, we talked about how the differences between the fathers. We talked about how Iwabuchi with Yoshiko, he was very genuine with, and you said, oh, he probably did have genuine feelings for it, and I think he did. I think that's the big point of the ending. I think, I think the ending of the movie is basically the the the, the line is finally crossed for him, where he's not going to be able to sleep at night. Yeah, um, I think that's what the ending is, because obviously the ending is quite dark because uh, Nishi loses, he gets he killed, does, yeah. he he fails because. Uh, Iwabuchi tricks his daughter because she's already about to see him and he tricks her with a drug as well um, and he makes her give up the location uh, as, as if you know, as if his son as, as if uh, Tatsio's went away to kill him because we, we see him kind of try to blast him with a shotgun at one point and it sets up the, the, the speculation in your head that he might be that yeah. hostile uh, Yeah, and then we see him, you know, we, we know he's gone out hunting yeah which it was. When, when we see him later come back, it does look like he legitimately was going out hunting yeah, for Yeah, yeah, he pulls out the, the, he's got some animals with him. He's like, no, nah, yeah. I, I killed these. But because her father presented the idea that he was after Nietzsche, we go, yeah, he could be. It's it's perfectly plausible. Yeah, it is. And he's, he, he tricks her, and then they, they go and find him. They find out that they've put him in a car to make it look like he just you know get hit by the train or whatever. It just you know looks like an accident. And obviously... Um, Itakuru, who's like left behind, uh, he's like cries. One of my favorite shots of the movie, actually, it's when it's when uh, Yoshiko and her brother are going to the the base again, the hideout, and again those stairs. But they're at the top of the stairs and they're looking down, and you just hear the noise, and you're not quite sure what it is yet. You, you maybe hear a little bit of crying, but it's really creepy. It's it's not it's not even sad yet. It's sad when you get down there and you see them, but at this yeah. point it's actually creepy because you have no idea who's down there. Yeah, you just don't know what to expect. Yeah, and then they go down. Of course, it's him, and he, he he's distraught because of everything. He can't prove anything now. Uh, they've lost everything, and they came so close, and they got beat. The corrupt system beat them. Yeah. And uh, it, but obviously, at least they're ascending. Where once again we see Iwabuchi talk to the press, and he just you know spits out all of these lies and talks about how oh, oh my son-in-law has been been killed, and he's a great loss, and. We see him go on the phone to his, his partners, the other company. He's like, oh, yeah, just for the interest of keeping the, the you know everything in line, public affairs, I think I'll resign. I'll go on a, a vacation. And again, it shows that he just how loyal he is to the system. Because even earlier on, he, he at one point said on the phone, eh, I'll take my own life if it's necessary. Like, even he's willing to go yeah, down with a sinking it's, ship. It's interesting, though, because this is not quite as extreme. It's, I'll resign. It's, it's almost a, an out at the same time. Because uh, as much he doesn't have to do it anymore. At that point, mm. it's like like he's done. He's like, no, I can't do this anymore. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go and spill the secrets. But I can't do any more after what I've done to my daughter. 
I don't know if he's necessarily made that choice yet, though. I don't think he's realised what he's quite mm. what he's done because okay. that comes next. Yeah, that that kind of comes next. I think I think I think he just he's think he's still thinking logically about the image of the company and all of the the deaths that have came. Because it's not even him that suggested the the vacation, is it? Where it's the it's the no. person on the phone. He he goes along with it. Oh, I was thinking the exact same thing. No, he wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. he goes along with it. Um, but that that's when Yoshiko and her brother are there. And because just the funny thing was, up until this point, I thought that Nishu might still be alive because we never seen a body. And I, if I have one thing I'm trained in in movies and TV is if it ain't nobody, that's it, isn't it? Dead. I mean, because they'd already pulled that earlier in this movie with Wada. Exactly. Yeah. Like so, there was there was a precedent. In fact, one of my favorite things with uh, Wada is every when he was, when he was pretending to be the ghost for uh, a. Yeah. <laughs> for for sure, I like every like when he was just he appeared again. He appeared down the the alleyway and the light, and then mm. he dis- disappeared. And it's like, oh, they're actually pretending to haunt him. This is great. <laughs> this is it is. It was it's genius. It was beautifully shot, so it was actually kind of creepy in the way it looked, but it was also insanely funny because you knew he was just alive. And this was just yeah, all to scare yeah. the shit out of him, and he was such a a, a little slime ball that it, it just kind of worked. Yeah, a great bit of dark comedy in there. But the reason why I bring that up is because in this final scene, because obviously he starts the phone call, and then he looks over and he, he he reacts in shock, and then the camera pans over, and up until it actually landed on Yoshiko and her brother, I legitimately thought it was going to be Nishi. Mm. I really thought they were going to. Well, that's it, because all we'd had was the the fantastic shot of the you know his trench coat. Yeah. And I love that, you know, once he goes into, like, full Avenger mode, he just, he, he kind of just, that trench coat is, is like, it's almost like his cape. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. But, no, it pans over, and I was expecting this shit, I really was, to, so that he would win. And he doesn't. It's basically just, uh, it's them, and uh, Yoshiko's brother says, when you killed him, you also killed her. And we never want to see you again. Stay out of our lives, and it'll leave. And the camera goes back over to him, He's distraught for a second, but the phone rings. Uh, whoever was on the phone to picks it up, and he finishes the conversation. Um, and he says, "And one of the final lines of the movie is, um, yo, I didn't sleep very well last night.' And yeah. it, there it is. Like he's he's finally crossed the line. And that's not to say that, because obviously the title implies that. All right, so if he can't sleep, then he's a good. Well, he's not good, but there is eventually a line where he's going to feel guilty, where he does lose sleep over what he's done." That's it, isn't it? It's when it affected him personally. Like, like we say, he did care for his daughter. Like, mm. despite all these evil and awful things that he has done, his love for his family was genuine. And when he had to hurt her and, and seeing what he's done to her, it's it, yeah, that that kind of broke him. Yeah. So that that's kind of ultimately what the arc of the movie is. It's it's, it's him crossing that line and realizing that he's a bad guy. Yeah, which is almost it's almost the start of the redemptive path. I, 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 don't it, think, I don't think redemption is possible necessarily. Well, okay, I just mean in the sense that you can't work to be someone better if I, if you don't acknowledge that you are flawed. Because I I don't think the the movie's ending supposed to be hopeful. No, it's no. not hopeful at all. It's, it's it's very it's dark and it's depressing and it's 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 basically his punishment. Yeah, it's his punishment for doing this is realizing that he's an awful person he has to live with that now because he doesn't get to take the easy way out yeah the, 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 yeah that's exactly what it is it's just, there's nothing about it it's oh this is the start of a redemptive thing where maybe if there was a sequel not that i'd expect one but if there was oh this he'll be righting his wrongs no no he has done vile things he has killed people yeah. he has made people commit suicide there is no redemption for that but it, 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 there is like a small part of justice for the audience because we go yes feel it you asshole and he does yeah. feel it for once he actually does feel that he's done and it's it's such a small victory given that our hero lost like yeah. all of this he lost but but th- th- so this is all we can take comfort in like that yeah he, he acknowledges it that that he was wrong and well, which is more than he'd, we'd had the rest of the movie but i, th- I think the beauty of that though is that it, it kind of ties into this idea that um, actually getting vengeance of some kind is very bittersweet. It's not just this, oh, you're happy all of a sudden. So even though he does get a personal comeuppance, as it were, we like we don't feel that satisfied. Yeah, like, it's, it's a great ending. Like, when, I say, when I say I'm not feeling satisfied, I don't mean I don't feel satisfied as the end of a movie. I feel very satisfied as the end of a movie. Cause it, you, you feel, yeah, you feel dissatisfied with your hero because you feel yeah. like we still lost. Because you're... you're 
by and large, you're, you're just naturally on the hero's side. So you're rooting for the victory. So when you lose, there is a, a moment of disappointment. Yeah, but I, I think that's actually why the ending's so good. I think the ending, it makes you feel the pain of this corrupt society screwing you over because you're just another example of the loss. Yeah. But you see the human element in him at the end and you see him have to suffer with it. And it's like, well, there you are. Yeah. But yeah, they are... I think it's, it's a, a really powerful ending, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, it's the perfect ending, to be honest. I, I can't think of a better way to end this. Um, but don't get me wrong, I was rooting for a happier ending, the whole movie, and obviously that's I was it, but once sad. It was, yeah. and, and that's it, even when you're going into this final scene, you're still hoping for the happy ending. You're still hoping to see Nishi yeah, there. I was. Like, I really was. That's it. That's how much you want this good ending. But you're like, well, if I can't have that, this is this is the best I can get. At that point, that's that's what you got to take. What you can get is almost it. I almost think that's even simplifying it too much. <laughs> it probably is. I, I, that's just saying, oh, as a viewer, you take what you get. Well, I, I, well, well sure, but I, I think I think the ending is poignant. It is, yeah. Poignant's the word I would use, uh, as opposed to that convoluted, simple thing you just said. Convoluted and simple. Aye. It, you went round. You went convoluted to give it a simple explanation, which yeah, in doing yeah. so I, robbed it of its weight. Yeah, I kind of changed my mind halfway through, didn't I? You did. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know what the best thing about black and white is? Go on. I can't tell if anyone's ginger. <laughs> Do you know what? I think you'd tell. <laughs> I think you'd just uh, know. Yeah. You'd, you'd look at them and go. That's a ginger. I'm going to put you in black and white for one of these videos and just be like, nah, I'm, I'm not convinced. <laughs> <It's> still... <laughs> Make a little black hair on, on the black and white, but it's not. I can, I, I just know. You, 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 you just know in your soul that uh, there's a ginger there still. Nah. Uh, nah, it's a, it's a fantastic movie. Uh, honestly, what, once it became clear what the movie was really about, uh, the, the actual, like, you know, u- using the, the one character to pretend he's a ghost to, like, scare the other one and sort of reveal his motives, like, all of the actual plot on just on a surface level was very exciting. I mean, you know, it was very thriller, it was very... Uh, and it was well shot where they were using things like light and shadows and reflections and uh, yeah. so, some of the just the simple cinematography of, like, a nice wide shot where they're both characters on the scene talking to each other. Uh, it's great stuff. Um, very well paced as well. Outside of that opening scene, which I did think was a little bit weirdly paced, the rest of it, fantastic. Um, but then it has this deeper side to it where once I realised, oh, wait, like... Can our hero cross that line where he's doing too much, where he's losing his humanity by going so far to get his justice, his vengeance? And but then I'm like, well, yeah, but the whole idea is that he won't be able to sleep with himself. You know, he uh, sleep yeah. with himself. You know what I meant? Uh, live with himself, aka sleep at night. Uh, yeah. I, I combine two analogies it's together. Easy. Apologies. But you know, uh, that, that once once that became like a clear thing, like I I started reading every single scene that way, and it was yeah. it, it made it just a lot more enriching as a result. Like everything, and that's it. Was, it. And, and every that. single scene did have that meaning as well. There was nothing yeah. there that was just there for the sake of it. It was all serving this greater narrative. Because when they confront him at the house, when uh, you know the other guy finds out he sees the picture from the yeah. from the, the guy's funeral from five years ago, and it, it turns out oh wait that's him it's been him all along, uh, which by the way great reaction. Um, his face was glorious, but when he he he, he, he tells the boss man and the the, the brother overhears it, Tatsy overhears it, and he comes out with a gun and he screams it and like uh, Yoshiko turns around and he's like what? And as much as we're on his side and as much as we agree with what he's doing. Yoshiko's disappointment in it kind yeah. of breaks your heart a little bit because you yeah. care about the fact that he, A, he cares about her, but also the fact that she does seem like a genuinely nice person who, on, on top of it all, is living with a disability. And you get the sense that maybe, oh, she had a hard time finding a husband because she you know, wasn't out like everyone else uh, kind mm. of thing. And she found someone, she was happy, uh, and this is kind of like a, this betrayal uh, yeah. kind of idea. Just what I love about that moment. Uh, Nishi has this thing, you know, he, he whistles that mm. same tune. And he always whistles when it's a, a moment that's kind of important to him. Uh, and often it's, you know, when he's going to kill the guy or, you know, going off to confront someone. But one of the times that, that he does it is uh, as he's walking up to that house with the flowers. Yeah, yeah. And it really tells you, no, this is genuine. 
because he that, that's that's the only like those times that he whistles there when he's truly himself. I don't know one of the biggest laughs of the movie is you know they're trying to starve the guy to make him talk about everything. Yeah. And it just cuts to a scene of him eating. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah, you know like, right away he's broke and he's like he's, he's just chowing he's just down, shoveling down the food. And it's like, yeah. yep, okay, he broke. Yeah, no, that was pretty funny. Yeah, so that's the thing about this movie is as much as the, the themes are pretty dark and it has a good exploration of character, there are genuinely some really funny moments as well. There are, um, and it's it's impressive they never feel out of beat. Like they're always just like, of course, that's a funny moment in this horrific situation. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then the ending, and it makes everything feel a bit more realistic as well because there is there are ups and there are downs, and there's there's funny moments in there, but there's also more serious moments. There's emotional moments and so on. So the the ending feels like more of a realistic gut punch because they felt like real people, they felt like real characters. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, uh, fantastic. Really is. Uh... I mean, it's a Kurosawa movie, which yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad this was picked for us. I. I mean, obviously, we'll end up doing more of his films at some point or other. Yeah. I have no doubt. Um, but this was... Uh, had had we been doing this when Man- Magnificent Seven came out, that would have been a good excuse to do uh, Seven Samurai. It would have. Given that so, is actually so the, original, the original. The problem is, like, we, we often find an excuse to do films like that. Yeah, yeah. But the ones like Seven Samurai, you know, the ones where we just pick, right, we're going to do that one whenever. Yeah, that's such a long movie that we're gonna have to really think about when we schedule to do it. Three and a half hours is a commitment, certainly. Yeah, because we have to make sure we schedule it where we've probably got nothing else on that day. Because you know, three and a half hours to watch, you know, yeah, an, hour the whole day. Yeah. To, an hour or whatever to talk about it. Like that's it. We're not doing anything else. To be fair, Seven Samurai, I think an hour for conversation. Uh, maybe. I'm being yeah, I'm being stingy there. Yeah, but ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I would certainly rank this pretty highly on his list of movies. Not 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 top three or anything like that. I, certainly, I've got like others that would slot into those slots. But uh, but it's up there. But I like it more than some of the other. Like I like this more than I probably in fact, out of the the Shakespeare adaptations, if you want to call them that. This is probably my favorite. Uh, I I'm yet to see Ran, but mm. uh, I think I I think I did prefer Throne of Blood over this. But that's just because I have a. A deep love of Macbeth anyway that's like my favorite Shakespeare so to see it adapted so well is, is something that, that just gets extra points for me oh okay okay uh no I think I like this more I think I think I think something I really love as well is when I see a really good Kurosawa movie that's not samurai and I love his samurai stuff but it's really fascinating to watch him work in contemporary it, it almost Japan impresses you more doesn't it because yeah. you're like you, you kind of forget that he can do this stuff just as well because high and low is very good that's a very good thriller uh, if you've mm. not seen that uh, that's about someone getting kidnapped. It's, it's a good, great movie. Um, yeah. So it's almost the sort of plot you'd expect Hitchcock to do. Well, hell, this is the sort of plot you may expect yeah, Hitchcock to do. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, which, I mean, I, I guess uh, in a lot of ways he... Not, not so much in the style, but just in the sense that he is the, the Japanese director of the time that everyone knew his name. Kind of like Hitchcock was the director of the time. Everyone knew his name. Yeah, he was the, the, the A-list big name. Yeah. I mean, he, sure, there's all directors at the time that were also really great, like Billy Wilder and... Uh, I'm blanking now that I said that I shouldn't have been in that path but like, even as good as Billy Wilder was he wasn't a household name like Hitchcock was to people who didn't you know, follow movies as much well, well that's it Like even today you say Hitchcock everyone knows Hitchcock yeah. even, if they, even if they haven't seen any of his films they know the, 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 the idea they know what to expect from a Hitchcock film just, just from that Do you know, I once had a friend who I, I, I said at one point, because I, I knew well enough to know what he had and hadn't seen. I said, well, you've never seen a Hitchcock movie. I can't remember why I said that, but the conversation led to me yeah. saying, you've never seen a Hitchcock movie. He says, yeah, I have. I was like, which one? He's like, Silence and Alarms. I'm like, aye, Silence and Alarms, that movie that came out like a good 15 or so years after he died. Aye, that one, that was him. <laughs> you dumb prick. <laughs> <laughs> So I wasn't expecting that. I just wasn't expecting that story to go there. <laughs> it just popped in my head since we're talking about Hitchcock. That, yeah, that, why not? Never leave me. Oh, dear. Uh, but no, uh, really good movie. It might, it might even be in my top five Kurosawa. I'd have to sit and look at his filmography and think about well, it. Well, that's but... it. It's such a strong filmography across the board. Uh, that... It's a high claim. Yeah. But it may actually be sneaking into that top five. I I, I really like this. Um, mm. 
And it's almost like that opening scene, which I wasn't as keen on and on itself, kind of put my expectations in a weird place because I'm like, oh, I'm not really into this shit. But then once it got, I mean, to all it, of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Do, 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 I mean, obviously the scene where he gets from the volcano was kind of the, the start of really knowing what the plot was. But I think it's when he took him to his own funeral, and he played the tape back, and he kind of got, all right, I see what this is going to be. Like I yeah. really see what he's doing here as a character, what his goal is, and what his mission is. Um, and everything from that point on was just utterly fantastic. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, and I, I think the brother character, uh, Tatsio, is a really good character. Not not, not in of himself, but just in that he's he's the one where we see because you never really like to see Yoshiko look sad herself. It's him worrying about her and worrying about the fact that you know Nishi's constantly coming home late because because we know he's out detectiving and trying to you know yeah bring Friendly. down her dad. Yeah, he's he's doing all his detective work, uh, but he he's the one who's concerned. What? Why is he keep coming home late? Why is he not being a husband? Why is it? And it's him being worried about her that really opens up to the audience. Oh, this is all the things he's he's neglecting her. I mean, in fact, even his friend, uh, Ita- 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 I have a hard time with his name. Itakura, Itakura. It's it's a oh. hard name to say. Um, but. Even when he finds out that uh, he never like consummated the marriage, he's like, "Oh, we never had the honeymoon because of a condition." That was kind of his excuse. Uh, and mm. we've already, and at that point, we'd already seen they slept in separate beds. Uh, even he's like, "Oh man, that's more cruel than just torturing her." <laughs> uh, that, you know, the idea that he's neglecting her as a husband, and she doesn't have any idea why. Uh, yeah, that's it. This this obsession is, is this obsession with his father essentially has has left him to neglect his yeah. his marriage. It's this whole. Yeah, the, the whole thing is just a family drama. But I think I think the brother band. I think the brother character though uh, is what opens the door to all that. Like it really makes it clear to us what, everything that's he's affecting to her by what he's doing. Yeah, I, I think the brother character is interesting because we don't actually see that much of him compared to many of the other characters. Mm. And a lot of him, he almost feels like he could be a villain along with his father. You know, like we go, oh, he could be out hunting Nishi. Yeah, you know? and it would almost feel justified from his perspective because. As far as he's concerned, this man has, has tricked his sister, you know, in, mm. in, and it, it, you get why he feels like, no, I'm going to beat this guy up, like he says. And you get, why, you know, when, when he comes back and he takes the shot at him, you, you, you kind of, you understand it from his perspective, which yeah. is, but, but without that much screen time to build it up. So it's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, even, even Etakura, uh, like, you don't even get a lot of him until, like, the last third of the movie, really. Until they're in the hideout and there's a lot mm. of him, like, interacting with uh, Nishi. Until then, there's only a few scenes with him and you kind of get a sense of who he is more towards the end. It's, it's, it's again, it's, it's when we had that scene where they actually come up top and you see the, the surrounding, like, bomb yeah. site. And we really get a chance to, like, get to know them because they're explained to, to uh, Waga, or Wada, sorry, uh, like... You know how they're friends, how they came to know each other, and why he used his name later on, and that kind of thing. And his ending is kind of one of the worst as well, because his life's destroyed. He can't back, go back to being himself. Yeah, he can't go back to being Nishi because Nishi is dead. Yeah, legally he's dead. Yeah, so he has to st- stick with his friend's name, and his friend's also dead, so he's kind of alone. And, and it, yeah, it's been five years, but it, you always get the impression that he felt this was temporary until the job was done mm. and then he could go back to his life. He, he'd helped his friend. He'd done what he had to do. But now he got dragged into this and he's stuck this with this and that's kind of unfair for him. If I'm going to be optimistic about post-movie, I think Yoshiko and her brother will befriend them. So he's got a friend. <laughs> Gotta have some hope somewhere. I, I feel I feel like, yeah, they, they would bond over what's yeah. happened, I imagine. Yeah. Bond over the loss. Yeah. Very, very, very possibly. Uh, but no. Sh- shall we rate? I suppose we should. You got it's a number in mind? Or you... it's, uh, it's, it's high, obviously. Aye. I think I'm going to have to go with a 9.5. Oof. Yeah. Oof, that is high. I, I'm going with a straight 9. But... Yeah. I mean... Like, 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 it is just that opening bit that stops it being a 10, I think. Mm. Otherwise, it, it probably would have been quite easily. But there's just that there that just makes me just knock it down a touch. Yeah, that's, that, that's fair. Um, yeah, opening scene, uh, not too fond of. And, uh, or at least, that even sounds harsh it, for what I mean. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like, I get what it's doing, but 
and, and like, I excuse its faults because of you know reasons, like I said earlier. But ultimately, a lot of it is unnecessary. Yeah, the the cake part and finding out about the suicide from years ago are the important parts. Of I that feel scene. like it's it's twenty minutes. Probably could have been ten. Yeah, it goes on too long. Maybe that's the real problem with it. Yeah, it goes on too long. It could have been shorter and condensed information to a more a more digestible amount. Yeah, as opposed to like just all these yeah, names. Yeah, we didn't we didn't positions. need all of it. Um. So yeah, I, I, I think that's fair. Um. But yeah, net nine for me. Uh, which is to say, it's excellent. <laughs> so. Yeah. If you haven't seen The Bad Sleep Well, uh, you want to watch more Kurosawa, uh, by all means check it out. That said, if you've not seen any Kurosawa, there's obviously maybe a couple of other films that are more of a, a first-time approach. We said it, Seven Samurai. Watch Seven Samurai if you've not seen Seven Samurai. Cause, uh, it's pretty excellent. Yeah, and I'll tell you this, the and I've not seen the, the, the new remake of it, but the original Magnificent Seven uh, has got nothing on Seven Samurai. So if you're a fan of that movie, forget it exists. Watch Seven uh, Samurai. I, I've seen all three. Seven Samurai is easily the best. You know, there's no comparison. Yeah, I, it's not even... Know, uh, I, 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 do, I will say, I think the newer one is pretty a little bit better than, uh, than the other one. True. Hmm? Sure. Just, just, it, it's, it's got a little bit more going for it. But I think ultimately both of them are fine, but nothing special. Not, not, they're not Seven Samurai. Aye, aye. Uh, but there you go, 9 and 9.5 so that's uh, one of the highest I think we've only, obviously we've topped that a few times with uh, Alien and Aliens and I, I think those were both uh, up yeah, in the 10 think, range. and obviously you gave Unbreakable on Mulholland Drive I give that a 10 as Mulholland well Drive, yeah. you were uh, a bit higher than me on those for, uh, Godzilla was reasons. quite high was Godzilla 10, 9.5 maybe I think that was maybe the 9s Yeah, it was quite high definitely I, I don't know if it was quite as high as this hmm but still, there you go. That's that. That's uh, the bad sleep. Well, Kira Kurosawa, check it out. Obviously, um, let us know what you think of the film if you've seen it in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates and that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv. Of course, one of the perks is that you get to vote on the monthly vote uh, in the five dollar tier. But even just in the one dollar tier, you get these a week early. All, every one point twenty one in flux, you get a week in advance. Uh, so if you're watching this publicly on YouTube, it means the next one at least, if not next two, because sometimes we do more than one a week, uh, but at the very least the next one will be up uh, for yeah. patrons. Yeah, and if, you, if, the, you're going, if you're watching this just as it's gone up on YouTube, the vote for next month's Patreon's pick should just about still be up. Just about, yes. Yeah. Just about. Not not for a long time, because by the time this goes up publicly on YouTube, it will be very near the end of the month, but you have until the last yeah. day of the month yeah. to to vote on the uh, the, the July and, vote. for, And if you're watching this a bit later, well, then you can go and vote for August. Hi. Hi. We'll be announcing what the August picks are, what the the, the, the August options for the vote are, um, at the same time we announce the winner of the the previous one. Yeah. I think. At least that's the plan right now. If I think of a problem with that plan, it'll change. But right now, that's the plan. Um, so, no, that is that is us. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully, it's nice to do an older movie, especially one that I've not seen. Yeah, especially as recently with so many of these new films coming out that we're having to do previous movies of. It's been a while since we've actually done something older, which was the whole point of starting this show in the first place. Yeah, I mean, there's room for both because uh, I I often find I don't I don't rewatch stuff as as much as I should either. Yeah, that's true. Because I I often feel compelled. Oh, if I'm watching, maybe I should watch something that I've not seen. I should I'd expand my horizons. Uh, so I like having an excuse for both, but it, ha it has been oddly one sided this past it's just, month. It's just been stacked for this month because of certain films coming out. Yeah, namely Spider Man and Apes. Uh, yeah, those, those variety, but uh, but no. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Blah, 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 blah. I've said all that already. But we just start talking about all things. I, I feel weird about just ending now. But I guess it's time to end. So bye, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>